Oh, I heard the best story today. Okay, here's something that I heard. Um, somebody was teaching her kids different forms, and the kids were, were really interested in my book, Mirror, Mirror, because I came up with a form. And I will explain what that form is. It's the reverso. You read a poem down one way, and it's one poem, and then you read it back up with changes only in punctuation and capitalization, and it's a different poem. So the kids in the class were fascinated that a poet could create a form. So they were working on haikus, and one boy didn't quite understand what a haiku was. Instead of five, seven, five syllables, he thought it was five, seven, five words. And he came up with this thing, and his name was, uh, was Zach, so they call him Zakus. And he has come up with the Zaku, which I think is thrilling. So one thing you could certainly do is give kids the permission to play with form. This particular person said she does acrostics a lot with kids, but she stresses that they have to make sense. You can't just, you know, write anything out there. So I think permission to play is a really great thing. I think uh, another idea that's, that uh, Sylvia Vardell had, a wonderful teacher, professor, was to pair two kids. One of them is the poet and one is the scientist. And one of them writes a poem about the, this topic and the other writes the prose piece about the topic. That's a great way, that, that has so many uses, it's unbelievable because you get poetry, you get prose, you get science, you get a topic, you get a, an understanding of genres. So that I think is a really great thing to get kids to write. Um, another thing I think is just to, po uh, artists do still lifes. I think it would be interesting to say, okay, it, this is what an artist does with a still life. Here's, a, here's something an artist might use for a still life. Let's create a poem, a still life poem. I, I think j anything that you can do to show that things interconnect would be a, a, a good thing. Um, I, and those are some of the ideas just like off the top of my head and that, that people have told me. I'd be curious to know how teachers actually get kids to write poetry. I don't think they have too much of a problem from what I understand. When I've spoken in libraries, I've asked kids, do you like to write poetry? And they, and they really do. And I asked why, and I think maybe this is the key. One of them said, because I can write my feelings. So another thing that teachers can do, and this is, I used to be a teacher. I taught high school English, as I said, for a number of years. And one of the things that I used to do is at the beginning of each class, I would have free writing time. And I would say, I don't care what you write about, but you have to write something. Well, if you want to make it specific, I don't care what you write about in a poem, but you must, you know, attempt to write something. I won't grade it. You know, I, I will read it. And if you like, I will read it out loud. So I think, I think that's another good thing to give. I, I, I'd like to see people freed a little bit. I think, I think that's a major issue. And I think it's a major issue for adults, not feeling free enough. I talk to people all the time and say, I really, I really want to write. I have all these ideas rattling around in my head, but it's so hard for me to get it down on paper. There's something constraining them, and it probably dated back to school, dare I say school, <laughs> you know.